Praise the Lord and welcome to my prayer closet. I am very happy that you clicked and you are here with me to all 792 of my awesome subscribers. I am so happy y'all are rocking with me every day. I just finished praying for y'all, some of you all by name, as the Holy Spirit prompted me to do so. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, here's what we do. We pray on this channel. We study God's word on this channel and we provide tips to help you live your life victoriously. If you need any of those things, would you please consider becoming a subscriber so you'll be notified when I have new videos to come out? Just hit the subscribe button on your screen and boom, you're a part of our virtual faith family. I'd love to welcome you in. Now, if you clicked this link about prayers for your calling, then maybe you know you have a calling or maybe you don't even know whether you have a calling or not. And so I would be honored to pray for you and pray for that. Um, normally, I don't start the, um, the videos with um, a personal story because I like to get right into praying as quickly as I can within a minute, minute and a half. But y'all just bear with me for a moment because y'all, I have a story to tell you that is a little embarrassing. But now uh, that I'm in my mid 40s, I can laugh about it because it happened, oh gosh, probably 18 years ago, 19, 17 years ago. But um, I was visiting, my husband is Jamaican, and we were visiting my mother-in-law's church, which is a heavily Jamaican Pentecostal church, small, small church in Brooklyn. And uh, they were having a guest speaker there. It was a gentleman um, from a small Pentecostal uh, church um, uh, from India, I believe. And he was there praying, uh, you know, speaking preaching his heart out, sweating, people were running around. It was just a lot going on. And and then he began to kind of prophesy during the service. And my husband and I had only been married probably about two or three years. And we were just kind of sitting there and uh, during the service. And the man began to prophesy that there was a young woman there in the church. And that there had to be about, I don't know, 75 people in the service, I guess. And he began to prophesy that there was a young woman um, in the service who had a calling, who had a calling to preach and teach and pray and who would be um, who would be doing so, who would be preaching and teaching and praying over women around the world. And um, my heart started beating really fast and I'm thinking, please don't come over to me. Please don't talk to me. Please don't, don't, don't. And sure enough, this man walked over to me and he uh, told me to get up. And people are praying loud, speaking in tongues and people, you know, anyway, long story short, the man laid hands on me and I fell out completely. I don't really remember much after that. I just remember people helping me up. I don't remember he was standing over me talking and I just remember him pointing, but I don't remember much else. Well, because this man prophesied over me um, and what I will be doing um, in my early 20s, I decided to help God out. Now, here's where the story gets embarrassing, y'all. I decided I was just going to start right there. I was going to start living my calling. And so back then, there was a very popular video that was like viral. There was no YouTube back then. So these were videos that people were passing around. And uh, there was a video called No More Sheets by Juanita Bynum. In case you've never heard of it, you can Google it because it's all over YouTube everywhere. But those in my age range may know this. Remember this video, No More Sheets. So I decided to have a No More Sheets uh, women's Bible study party because in my early 20s, I probably was around, if I got married at age 25, I probably was like 27, 28. I had a No More Sheets party, y'all, in my apartment in Brooklyn. 
I bought tons of food. By the way, I didn't pray about this. I didn't pray. I didn't fast. I didn't get into the word. None of that. Um, And so (laughs) I just focused on buying a bunch of food, playing the video, and I'm going to talk. And y'all, it was just funny. Y'all, it was hilarious. Guess what? One woman, I invited 50 women to come one woman who was in uh, me and my husband's network marketing business, she came. And so my husband felt sorry for me. He decided to stay. So me and my husband and Miss Tina sat and watched No More Sheets together and ate all this fried chicken and all this food. Now, why do I tell y'all this story? And again, I apologize. I don't really ever talk this long. I get into the prayers. Um, One of the things, the mistake I made way back then is I took the word that someone spoke over me and decided to just run with it. I did not test the word against the word. I didn't test the word from the man against the word. I didn't seek godly counsel. I didn't pray about that. I just ran with it. And so when it comes to your calling, if someone prophesies over you or you believe you have a calling, you got to pray. You got to seek the Lord. Now, thankfully, uh, interestingly enough, uh, another woman prophesied something very similar in an office setting for, um, I don't know, six months later after that whole ordeal. So if you're wondering if you have a calling, let me pray for you. Let me pray. Let me. I don't know how God is going to lead me. I'll pray briefly uh, unless the Lord leads me to pray longer. But I want to pray over you because some of you might be in your 20s seeing this uh, and hearing this. And you may be questioning that some of you might be in your 50s and 60s. Please know that a calling isn't about um, just ministering um, in church. Do you know you can have a calling to minister on your job? My mom uh, works for a large retailer and um, she ministers right there on her job. She wins souls right there on her job. My husband in the field that he's in as a professional, um, the last company he worked for, they gave him permission to have a lunchtime Bible study at his company. So don't think you got to work for a church to fulfill your calling or you got to be a missionary or you got to have a YouTube channel. Um, No, no. Um, Whatever your calling is, your calling can be to raise godly children who will turn this world upside down for Jesus. Okay, so the first thing I know I'm going to pray is for you to have clarity on what your calling is. But don't think it's about church. A calling is about being where God wants you to be, doing what God wants you to do, all for his glory. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for these precious, uh, precious women, Lord. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over them. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and the voice of another they're not going to follow. Now, Lord, for all the women that need to know what is their calling, I pray they hear your voice this month. Father, the Bible says that Romans in Romans eleven twenty nine 29, that your gifts and calling, they are irrevocable, Lord. So even if ladies are feeling like they are too old to fulfill their calling, you haven't removed them. Father, the Bible tells us we should be diligent in our callings, Lord. And so I pray over these ladies that they would hear your voice. You would speak to them and you would give them supernatural clarity on their calling, Lord where you've called them to be, who you've called them to minister to, how you've called them to minister. Lord, the Bible says that we as disciples of Jesus are called to make disciples of all men. So show us how to do that. Father, the Bible also says in Ephesians 4, 1, that we should walk worthy of the calling on our lives. So Lord, let these women be clear. Let them not um, have any, any, um, anything in their lives that would hinder hearing your voice. 
and then draw them to you so they can walk out their callings. Let them have impact wherever they are, knowing that regardless of their age and regardless of their stage in life, regardless of the hell they've been through, that is all a part of the ministry on the inside of them. Father, the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, that we know that all things work together for the good, for those who are called according to your purpose. So, Lord, if these ladies have had a tough life, remind them that it's a part of their ministry calling. Let them not be weary. Let them be invigorated, excited. Father, Matthew twenty two fourteen 14 reminds us that many are called, but few are chosen. Lord, these ladies are chosen ladies. Father, the fact that they are even listening to this video all the way to this point, you have a word for them. Send them into the highways and the byways to be used by you. It doesn't matter whether they are 20 or 70. It doesn't matter. So, Father, I plead the blood over them for supernatural clarity to walk out, to live out their calling, Lord. Draw them to you, Lord, so they will do exactly what you call them to do, Lord. Let them hear from you. Let them receive confirmations of their calling, Lord, and not be astray. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Ladies, thank you so much for listening. I do apologize uh, that the video went this long, but you know I believe in being led by the Spirit um, and not some formula for these videos. So if you are still listening, I really hope this helped you. Um, I went through a wilderness season after that ordeal of being prophesied over. Um, and it took many, many years, uh, but I'm grateful that I am doing what that gentleman said today. I just didn't know I'd be doing it digitally, uh, virtually, but I thank the Lord. So you seek God for your calling. He'll answer you. Just focus on seeking God, okay? I am grateful for each and every one of you. I really, really am. And I look forward to praying with y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye.